Hey folks, it is the Nutty Knife Guy. Uh, this is going to be a really ad hoc video. I just kind of decided to do it. And it's going to be a little different because this is going to be an experiment. I want to get out my camera that my thoughtful viewer provided me out of the goodness of his heart. Thank you again. And I turned it on and it said, change the battery. And I didn't have any batteries for that thing lying around. But a couple of days ago, I got this new RCA tablet computer. And I decided to experiment with it and try and use it. So I'm going to play this video before I upload it to make sure the sound is reasonable and the video quality is okay. I will go back to using a proper camera in my next video after I get some batteries. Secondly, I have a co-host, Jolly Roger. Now I had another uh, YouTube channel that I kind of let go by the wayside called The Fighting Nerd. And it did some nice stuff and I just did some nerdy stuff talking about sci-fi and fantasy and all this other stuff. And uh, well, it didn't go very well. But I always had Jolly Roger as my co-host. But he went AWOL for a while. Couldn't find him anywhere. Found him not too long ago. I found him the other day as a matter of fact. And it turns out that he was in the custody of the East India Tea Company because he's a pirate. And the East India Tea, East India Tea Company really didn't like pirates. So not only do I have a pirate co-host, I have a time-traveling pirate co-host. But anyway, he's back. You'll see more of him. What we're going to do today is my favorite knives out of my collection. Uh, now these were chosen pretty quickly and but, and there are some reasons why but this should be pretty quick and I'm going to get right to it. The first one, reaching over here, is definitely my favorite. It is also the knife I've had the longest. This was my first fixed blade knife. It greatly resembles the Ontario Air Force survival knife, but it is not. It is a cheap copy. Okay, sorry for that slight interruption. I had to pause it. Uh, this is a cheap knockoff of the Ontario. All it's marked in is Japan and it's mystery steel. And it's got a tang that goes about this far down here and the rest of it is bolted on. And all you knife guys out there are saying, Nutty Knife Guy, how could you possibly call this your favorite knife? After seeing all the stuff that it's just a cheap knockoff and it's not all that great. The thing is this, this is my very first fixed blade knife that I ever owned. It was bought for me by my mother. She let me pick it out. But my mom bought this for me on my 13th birthday. Now, what makes it even more special, other than the fact that my mom, now, a little bit, a little background here. Uh, my dad died of a heart attack when I was three years old. I am the youngest of four brothers. So my mom had to raise four boys, pretty much by herself, with an assist from her parents. So it was really hard for her not to, like, nanny her boys and mother us to the point where we really weren't allowed to be boys. And you've got to understand, this was boys back in the 70s, or 80s, 70s and 80s, where we didn't live with a Nintendo controller or game controller. See, Nintendo, that touches a whole lot of But a game controller grafted to our hands. All right, so I didn't know anything about knives, but this looked pretty cool. And she let me pick it out at a little outdoor outfitters. But having said all the things about the mystery steel with the bad construction and all this other stuff, this thing saw me through many adventures in the wilds of Tuscarora County, Ohio. It carved many a, a hot dog skewer. It helped start many a campfire. It did all kinds of things because when I was a kid, I was a ridge runner and I was always out in the woods because again, back in the day, me and my buddies would get up in the morning, pick a direction, and start walking out in the woods, see some stuff we hadn't seen before, and come back. And that you could allow your kids to do stuff back then. 
couldn't get away with that now. Trust, no trespassing signs every, every, everywhere. And the law protects the people who harm children to a large degree. So, uh, the, you know, 13 years old mom bought her boy a knife and let him run around alone with it is pretty freaking special. Uh, the sheath kind of fell apart. The sheath came with it. I'm, one of these days I'll buy a new sheath for it. But I don't carry it anymore. But I don't know how you can see it very well. But you can see this thing has been used and used and used. And uh, it will probably be passed on to my nephew since I have no kids of my own. He'll probably going to get the whole collection. But I will make sure that he knows how special this one is. So that is my number one favorite in my collection. It was really the beginning of the Nutty Knife Guys knife dementia or knife collusion or knife fetish, whatever you want to call it. Uh, hands down my favorite knife. My second favorite knife. Well, it, these are now these ones are in no particular order. This is a Black's Black Fox Cutlery. Uh, I think the model number is on here. This is an N680. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this one. Uh, I actually found this at a pawn shop locally and paid $20 for it. Uh, I did find out on the internet that uh, I've seen this go for about $60. Uh, this is a very nice knife, particularly for $20. But I love it because it's so much fun to swing around. Now, and that's another thing, not all of these knives are going to be high-end great stuff. Matter of fact, most of them aren't. I judge my favorite knives by how much joy they bring me to own. How often do I play with them? Right. When I go through my re uh, rotation and practice, I practice with all my knives. I practice with my EDC every day. But otherwise, I go, you know, one. I'll practice with one knife one day and one knife another and I just go through them. This is one of those knives when I get to that, this one in the rotation, I'm like, oh cool, I get to use the black fox. Now they call this a European boar hunter, but boy, does it look like a Filipino garab. Uh, now this is mono construction, the tang, the the tang, the guard, and the guard are all one piece of steel. You can see no seams. This thing is a beast. I have used this before. I don't use it a lot because for bush clearing I have, you know, cheap machetes for that that'll do the job without messing with this knife. Because uh, this is not a cheap knife. It's You can pay some money for it if you can find one. I don't think it's very common. Uh, nice rosewood handles. Uh, it's a little slick, which is why I have a string on the end here to kind of catch on my finger so it doesn't become a projectile and kill somebody's dog when I'm practicing with it. Uh, a bit of a choil. I, you know, I, I would. I tell you what. If as a tool and a weapon, if they would replace the rosewood with something like craton, oh man. But as it is, great little knife, really good edge. I love the recurve. This is a chopping beast, even though it's fairly light. If you can find one of these, that's great. Now, as I said, I got this at a pawn shop, and the sheet that came with it was pretty crappy. It was like vinyl uh, and even the vinyl was of poor quality. I don't know if that was the original sheath or not though. So uh, if any of you know about this knife or can find one, let me know if, it, if I can get a better sheath for it because it deserves a great sheath. Love this blade. And next is my Gil Hibben tactical assault knife. Now, I've reviewed this before, and I really hate that they called it a tactical assault knife. There's nothing tacti tactical about this. It's bright. It's shiny. It attracts attention. Right? And it's only going to be an assault knife if I assault somebody with it. I would call this a dueling fighter. This is pretty much designed to fight other people at close quarters. As in a duel. It, it, I mean, it can do all kinds of camping stuff if you want to, but that's not what it's for. It's a fighting knife. Of course, it's beautiful. Right? It is also uh, mono construction. 
all one, the, the sub hilt, the hilt guard, are all one piece as far as I can tell. I don't see any seams. My car to handle, great in the hand, nice balance. A lot of people don't sub out like sub hilts, but I love sub hilts, which will become evident as you see the rest of the knives are my favorites. Um, but I know you, I can't, you can't really see it flipping around, but this is just a joy. This is something I can just I sit there and watch TV and I hold it and I just, it relaxes me. This is just, uh, uh, it's, it's 60 bucks, I think. Uh, that, to me, it's not a, to me, that's not a budget knife. To some people, that's a budget knife, but to me, it is. Uh, but uh, most definitely, this is one of the ones that I just go to when I just want to feel a knife in my hand, which is most of the time. Uh, and it's just a great little number. It just brings me joy. And let's see, what's the next one? The next one is another sub hill. This is an M Tech. Let me read this again, if I can. MX4080, if I can read that little tiny print with my old eyes. Uh, this is an M Tech Extreme, M -tech Extreme model, which is supposed to be a step up from the regular M Tech line. And I can see that. Uh, again, this is just one of those ones I love the I just love the hole. I just love the wheel. Uh, I have tested this. It's been up against the war post. Uh, it's cut a lot of water bottles. Uh, it seems to be very strong. It also has that one one piece construction which I love so much. And of course it's another sub hilt. It has its problems. I mean there's some cosmetic stuff. I reviewed it. You can go see it. Uh, I think I reviewed this one, but just in case, that one review might be on the Fighting Nerd website. Uh, it's got some fit and finish issues, but they're very, very minor, and they're completely cosmetic. Some of the scales don't quite fit flush to the frame, but um, and I could just, it could stand to be the, these could stand to be not quite as sharp the edges, but it still feels good in the hand. It is very wieldable. Uh, this recurve just made immense me. Uh, I should have filmed this, but I didn't think of it at the time. There was a time when we were having ham for dinner, a big one, big roasting ham, and I just couldn't resist. I just gotten this, and I just couldn't resist going uh, doing the ham with this. Don't tell anybody. Uh, and I just went after the ham with this thing. This thing. This recurve just would do horrendous amounts of damage to a Lizardman Zombie Ninja. And uh, now I only took a couple of hunks out of that ham and then I got to slice it so nobody could tell. But uh, this thing is just a slicing beast. Again, not much use uh, as a bushcraft or hunting knife. You can get away with it, I suppose. It's a fighting knife, but that's, my thing is edge weapons. So, uh, so yeah, this is another M Tech. Well, I know a lot of people hate M Techs. But they hit the M Tech hit this hit it out of the park with this one. And then we have another one that has been in my collection for a long time. This is the Ontario Knife Company Spec Plus Tanto SP13. I don't they don't make these anymore. I'm pretty sure they don't make these anymore. I probably had this one for about 30 years. Uh, and it has seen some use. I've had it out in the woods a couple of times, and but mostly I, I practice with this. Uh, this is another very early one in my collection. I think I don't can't remember exactly when I bought it, but it was probably 25 or 30 years ago. Uh, uh, and it's Ontario. I mean, you can it's a Spec Plus Ontario, so you know Ontario is going to be halfway decent. Uh, 1095 steel. This coating is so far indestructible. Like my other Spec Plus, I have a bunch of Spec Plus uh, knives from Ontario. Now, the one thing that I kind of want to stab myself with this thing when I every time I pick it up too is when I first bought it, I didn't know anything about knives. I didn't know anything about how to use knives, really, in con in fighting. So, I was of this erroneous conception that in order to when you held a knife 
in the reverse grip you should be able to comfortably put it up against your arm for this kind of thing or to conceal it. And I cut off the part of the handgun that can guard on the back of the blade and on the back of the knife. <laughs> uh, stupid me, uh, but still. Uh, and of course, I know better now you keep it out here like this so you can hook and parry and all this other stuff. But, stupid. But still, uh, if you can find one of these, just grab it and hang on to it. Uh, it's kind of the perfect size because you can... Now, this one you can't do a lot of bushcraft with. Even though it's not really made for it, but the, it's got a slight curve in the blade. So feather sticking and stuff like this stuff like that really nice it's got enough weight to chop but it's not so big that it's a pain to carry and it's still fairly light great little knife well medium sized knife and then we've got last but not least the blessed warrior fighting knife this is custom made from the Kukuri House in Nepal. Thanks to Donnie B. L. Day, who did a video about a knife he had made from this company. I sent them specs and drawings for this, so this is my design. This is my idea of the perfect fighting knife. Uh, 12 inches long. This is 5160 spring steel. Um, I paid 150 for this. This is custom made and shipped from Nepal, so that that is not bad. This is another one that is just they hit it out of the park. I can't uh, no. I, I I can't imagine how hard it would be to take drawings from a guy like me. Specific. I wanted this. I wanted that. But their craftsmen had to make this. This isn't machined. This is made by hand. Right. And there was no way for me to know how it's going to be balanced when I made the drawings and, put, and came up with the specs uh, there was no way to, to tell them how to feel the hand but this guy had made so many knives for so many people that he was able to intuit and there was a lot of uh, back and forth by email asking me questions about how I should, they could do should, how they should do this and how they should do that and they gave me something incredible uh, so I am going to have another one of these made. I keep, I have it all designed and I want to, I want to get it made, but I always have to wind up spending that money for other things. I know that's sacrilege. Knives should always come first, but that's just not the way it is. Uh, they, you can go to the Kukri house. This is in their, uh, custom showcase or whatever, but in their custom knives, uh, you look for the blessed warrior and they should still have the specs on hand so you can go and buy one like this now i put in the grooves because i neglected to tell them that i want a texturing in the handle when i send them the specs so that's why the the grip grooves are kind of ugly but if you remember to tell them to put texturing in i'm sure that they can do it uh, but i i can't wait to get another knife from these guys it's fantastic uh, and so uh, like I said, this was going to be quick. This was kind of an experiment with my new gizmo. Uh, so, and from, and also to introduce you to Jolly Roger. So, so with Jolly Roger, I must ask you to draw your knives only in just purpose. Sheathe them only with honor. And to remember that without knives, life would be dull and pointless. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm up to 62 subscribers, which makes me very, very happy. I know that's minuscule. I know that's beyond minuscule by YouTube standards, but it makes me happy. Hit that like button, subscribe, and make me even happier. Uh, we'll be using the next camera, I mean the new camera, or the, the camera that was sent to me when I get batteries for it tomorrow. I have a Schrade needle knife dagger coming in the mail tomorrow which will probably be my the subject of my next video and with that I bid you good night